Hello and welcome. Whether you are watching or listening on the phone this Sunday morning or later in the day or indeed later on in the week, may you know God's love and peace with you. We meet on this Sunday after Pentecost, the day we call and celebrate as Trinity Sunday. And so what better hymn to begin with this morning than that found in CH4 at 111. Holy, holy, holy. Let us worship God. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will bear witness for me. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy God, on this Trinity Sunday, we come to worship you as maker of heaven and earth, in whose image all are made. We come to praise you as Saviour, the one who has broken the power of death and offers new life. We come to celebrate you as Sustaining Spirit, the one who is always with us, even to the end of time. As we do so, we pray that as we open your word, you would open our hearts, that we might turn our eyes towards Jesus, catch a glimpse of your mystery and wonder and beauty, find our place in the story and know deeply in faith or doubt that you are God who loves us and calls us to go and live full lives overflowing with love. 
Lord, forgive us any prejudice or pettiness within us, any selfishness and indifference and stir within us. Still our worries, quieten our fears, banish our exhaustion and fill us with your life-giving spirit that we might be refreshed and love as Jesus loves. Maker, Saviour, Spirit, hear our prayer. Amen. Well, we're now going to turn to God's Word and listen for it today as we read from the last chapter in the Gospel according to Matthew and Carol is going to read that lesson for us today. Let us listen for God's Word. Morning. Today's reading comes from Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee, where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even of those some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all people everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptise them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will be with you always to the end of the age. Amen. As we ponder the meaning of those four short verses, but important ones of the Great Commission, we're going to sing again. And it's a hymn for the enlivening and the renewing of the church. And it's him 608, Spirit of Truth and Grace. For weeks and weeks now, we couldn't go on our daily walk 
without encountering an absolute abundance of dandelions gently swaying back and forward in the sunshine. Now some of you watching or listening today might consider those weeds a real pests that are stubborn and they pop up at will and they need to be destroyed and uprooted. For others you might think them quite useful. The first pollinators in the spring for butterflies or bees and a beneficial ingredient in tea. I'm not here to argue either way today but the image of that round ball of seeds has really stayed with me especially as I've watched the excitement of Grace pick one and huff and puff and blow the seeds away to the wind. It took me back quite a few years to being that age myself and using a dandelion to tell the time. We are in strange times at the moment and last week I thought that the time of the dandelions had come and gone. Because as we scanned the tall grass on the sideways of the pavement as we headed to the park and the short grass in Dalmuir Park recently cut, I soon discovered that there were very few dandelions left, not least because of the wind that arrived on Friday. But together me and Grace scanned the grass and we found one. And I think it is an image worth pondering the other side of Pentecost. The day when we remember the wind of the Holy Spirit that huddled through and among a waiting people who were then energised to go and share the good news of Jesus. We don't have that story at the end of Matthew today, but we do have 11 disciples gathered together in Galilee, the place where Jesus' ministry had started and the place where the risen Jesus had told them to go. And there on the mountain, the place where temptations had been resisted, prayers had been uttered and sermons and stories shared. Jesus meets them. We're told that some worshipped and some held back in hesitation and in doubt, perhaps not quite believing their own eyes. And then Jesus told them, commissioned them to go. Go into the world and make disciples learners, baptise in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Teach others what Jesus had taught them and know that always he would be with them. Only four verses long and yet filled with so much. Of course, we have to be careful. I'm pretty sure that Jesus was not advocating making folks Christians and disciples against their will or by force. That, of course, would be the antithesis of love. But I'm confident that Jesus did want them and us to go. Go in God's name and spread the stuff of love and justice and kindness and mercy. Speak truth to power as surely as the dandelion in the wind spreads its seed by air or breath. And we can absolutely be sure of one thing. Now is always the time to do that. Of course, not everything that is done in God's name is good or loving or just. And not everyone who stands with a Bible in front of a building is obeying Jesus' commandments. 
to know that. Well, for a start, you have to open it. You have to read it. And even then, it's no guarantee that we are going to get it right. But you know, it's a start. For we are learners, surely hoping to learn more about Jesus and his ways. And if we open our hearts and make love the starting point and the centre, then hopefully we won't go too far wrong. I've been thinking about that a lot this week in light of those images of Donald Trump and the horrific scenes of George Floyd and his breath slowly being taken from him. Highlighting the problem of racism not only in America but throughout the world. Jesus said, go and teach them what I have commanded you. Just what did he teach? Well, we can read the pages of scriptures and the gospels and we can hear stories. We can hear sermons. We can see examples. But there's one that always comes back to me and is always at the forefront of my mind when I think about Jesus. And it's this when he is asked, what is the greatest commandment from all those hundreds? What does Jesus say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbour as you love yourself. And you know, this isn't about being nice or nicer. This is the hard work of loving. This is the radical way of Jesus that seeks to turn the world upside down. And we pledge to be part of that every time we pray, thy kingdom come, your will be done, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. As the disciples stood on the edge between what had been and what would be, so too do we. And so like the dandelion, stubbornly popping up and blowing in the wind, may we be swayed by the Spirit and go where she wills, be enlivened and energised by God's life-giving breath to go, to go in our faith and our doubt, in fear and excitement and spread the seeds of the good news of Jesus and turn this world upside down as we seek justice and kindness and mercy and speak of hope and that peace that passes all understanding and as we do so know that Jesus is with us always even to the end of time. Let us pray. Loving God in these strange days when we are swayed in all sorts of directions, experience a whole range of emotion, see and hear things that fill us with despair and long for this time of isolation and distancing to be over. Come and remind us that you are near and fill us with a longing for your kingdom as we pray this day for our world. Where hatred is sown, may seeds of love overpower. 
where racism and prejudice take root. May acceptance overwhelm where unfairness sprouts, may justice thrive. Where despair chokes, may hope blossom. Where fear stifles, may peace flourish. Wherever life is threatened, May the purposes of your kingdom be known and grown so that one day the whole earth will cry glory. Until then, through us, uphold the sick, comfort the grieving, lift up and help the oppressed and speak truth to power. Fill us, Lord, with your heavenly fire, as in the silence we offer our prayers to you. God in whose image all are made and to whom all lives matter and in whom all find their beginning and end. Hear us as we pray, for we ask it all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Well, before we sing our final hymn, just a few notices for you. And that is to say that there's opportunities throughout the week to catch up and enjoy some time and fellowship with one another online. And that first opportunity is today, Sunday, at 11 o'clock and 11.30 and the links will be on Facebook uh, tomorrow on a Monday at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock arranged by Liz Stewart and for more information about that please do check Facebook or contact Liz directly and on a Thursday evening where we have been gathering together online for a time of prayer an opportunity to pray for our world and bring the concerns of our own heart uh, to our God. So that's Sunday, Monday and a Thursday. And of course there's plenty of other things to keep you occupied on Facebook as well. As well as the beautiful pictures of our surrounding area put on by Tom. There's information and updates from Gillian, our children and family worker, about things like Messy Church and Mini Youth Group and the Emoji Group, which also meets this Sunday online. And if you want any more information about things related to children and young people and families, then please do contact Gillian directly. Also on a Thursday, when our pastoral assistant Lorraine isn't busy making telephone calls, she's writing thought-provoking and lovely reflections for us, and they appear on a Thursday. I'm conscious that we're trying our best to stay connected and to find opportunities to worship and meet together and obviously this time of worship does that and also available on the phone line and a weekly bulletin on our websites but 
I'm conscious that there's quite a few people that don't have internet access and to that end we're now burning DVDs so that people can watch this service on their TV. And so if you know of anyone who feels a bit disconnected and you would think that they would like this opportunity to worship, then please do contact me and I'll make sure that they get a DVD. Last but by no means least, I've mentioned before about our offering, which would typically, if we were in our buildings, be gathered in uh, every Sunday during worship. Please do keep your free will offerings. Consider changing to standing order or a new facility that's become around in the last few days and that is on the Church of Scotland website. They now have a big red donate button which allows you to donate directly to the Church of Scotland as a whole or find your local congregation, for instance Clydebank Waterfront or Dalmuir Barclay and give a donation directly to them. So please consider doing that if you so feel moved. But for now, we are going to sing our final hymn and it is 682, echoing the commission of Jesus, go in grace and make disciples. Go in your faith and your doubts and spread the seeds of the good news of Jesus and the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.